Jack Benny program. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At 49, American. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LS, MFT. LS, MFT. LS, MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Excuse me, this is Kenny Delmar. Excuse me, I have a special announcement to make. Herbert Tires and Cigarettes are back. Good news for those who prefer a cork tip cigarette. Herbert Tyden is back, and there's something about them you like. Herbert Tyden is back after being made only for the armed forces. Yes, Herbert Tyden is back. That cork tip cigarette, Herbert Tyden. Available now for you. Yes, Herbert Tyden is back. And remember, there's something about them you like. There's something about them you like. This is Kenny Delmar. I trust you will welcome home Herbert Tyden. There's something about them you like. Program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to last night and out to Jack Benny's house where the whole gang has gathered for rehearsal. <laughs> Rochester, has everybody arrived for rehearsal? Yes, sir. They're all in the library. Good. Well, I'm ready. Yes, sir. Mr. Jack Benny, everybody rise. <laughs> the first rehearsal of the 26th program of the Lucky Strike series is now in session. Good evening, Miss Livingston. Uh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Uh, good evening, Mr. Harris. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Gee, what's happened since I went away? <laughs> Another outburst like that, and I'll have the room clear. <laughs> now, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Mr. Harris, it's your other hand. <laughs> now, repeat after me. I do solemnly swear... I, I do solemnly swear, swear... ...that I will not divulge or repeat... That I will not divulge or repeat... Any routines, ideas, or jokes herein contained. Any routines, ideas, or jokes herein contained. And if I do, may I be farmed out till life can be beautiful. <laughs> and if I do, may I be farmed out till life can be beautiful. You may all be seated. Uh, rehearsal is now in session. And now, to facilitate the reading of the script, will everybody please remove their paper clips? Good. Rochester, collect them, count them, and straighten the bent one. Yes, sir. We will now commence the rehearsal with the opening introduction by Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, if you please. Thank you. I beg your pardon, Mr. Benny. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Wilson. What is it, Mr. Harris? Well, I'd like to propose an amendment to joke four on page six. Why? Because it stinks. <laughs> I see. Mr. Harris has expressed an opinion that joke four on page six has an aromatic quality which is not pleasant. <laughs> we will take a vote. Miss Livingston? I agree. Mr. Wilson? I agree. Mr. Day? I can't tell. I have a cold. <laughs> Motion passed. And now we will proceed... Oh, to... Jack, for heaven's sake, this is silly. What? Why do we have to go through this every time we have a rehearsal? Why can't we rehearse like we used because to? Because everybody took advantage of it. You come in late, you wouldn't pay attention, you sat around reading newspapers instead of scripts. That's why. But, Jack, you can't rehearse this way. You've got to loosen up. After all, this is a comedy program. Ooh, what she said. <laughs> Damn it. Libby's right, Jackson. We can't be funny when we're so formal and stiff. Phil, you're the only one that comes in stiff. <laughs> That's why 
I were rehearsing this way. Remember, I'm the star. I'm the star. I'm the star. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Quiet, Polly. Quiet, Polly. <laughs> Polly, if you don't keep quiet, I'm going to... You know what. Oh, Jack, not again. What does he do, Libby? Every time the Polly talks back to him, he takes her out of the cage, opens the front door, and hands her a road map to Capistrano. <laughs> Mary. That's the only parrot registered with the automobile club. Never mind. Let's get started with the rehearsal. There's no... There's, uh, now, here's the way the show will run. We'll do our usual opening spot, a band number, and then Dennis's songs... Sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, and Coca-Cola. Get your sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, and Coca-Cola here. Oh, yes. I'll have a roast beef. Here you are. Thank you. <laughs> And now we'll... Uh... Hard-boiled eggs, cooked fresh this morning, roast beef sandwiches. I'll have a hard-boiled egg. Here you are. Thank you. And now we'll... Uh... Uh, may I have a paper napkin, please? Yes, ma'am. Here you are. Thank you. <laughs> and now we'll... Uh... Will you have a sandwich, Mr. Day? Yes, please. Here you are. I'll have to re-educate this kid. He got his food free in the Navy. <laughs> and now we'll go... Let's go... call for sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, and Coca-Cola. Eggs and Coca-Cola! Eggs and Coca-Cola! <laughs> All right, kid, we'll start the rehearsal with the introduction. No, no, we better... Oh, Jack, let's start somewhere so we can get through. We're all going to the movies. Yeah, Jackson, we're going down to see that new picture, The Road to Utopia. Oh, yeah. Say, maybe I'll go with you. I'd like to see what Crosby looks like with his collar open. <laughs> anyway, kids, we can't go till after uh, rehearsal. I don't know what you want to go to the movies for anyway. There hasn't been a good picture since the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Polly. You didn't even see it. Maybe Walter Pigeon told her. Yeah, yeah, Walter Pigeon. He flies by here every day. <laughs> now, listen, kid, let's get one thing straight. My rehearsals are more important than going to the movies. I'm sick of the movies anyway. Oh, Jack, you always hate the movies this time of the year because you never win the Academy Award. Mary, that has nothing to do with it. Comedy pictures get very little consideration. I found out one thing. To win an Academy Award, you got to do a picture with absolutely no laugh. Well, your darn one last year made it. <laughs> idea. I don't mind when you ball up a lousy gag, but that was such a good one. Anyway, my next picture will... Sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, and Alabama pennants. Alabama pennants? Yeah, we have left over from the Rose Bowl game. Rochester, save those. Alabama may be out here again. Did I take a beating on those? <laughs> Tried everything. I even had Rochester sitting on a bale of cotton. Now, come on, kids. Let's get going with this rehearsal. Don, take it from oh, the... Oh, uh, Jack, Jack, I've been looking all through the script, and I don't see any place where I do a commercial. Oh, oh that. Well, Don, I got a big surprise for you, and it'll be a terrific on our show. Uh, what is it, Jack? Well, get this, kids. Now, Polly... Polly... <coughs> uh, now, Polly, what has Daddy been teaching you all week? No, no, Polly. No, 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 no. That, that you picked up yourself. Now, listen. L-S-M-F-T. L-S. M-F-T. Hardboard A. No, no, no. Take it again, Polly. L-S. L-S. M-F-T. M-F-T. Now, put them all together, and what have you got? Mother. <laughs> Polly, how can you be so dumb? Every week you listen to the radio, you hear the commercials. Now, what do you hear? Poor Mary Ann, poor Mary Ann. Wait, wait, wait. Not bad. Now, listen, Polly, listen. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Come on. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. Now, let's come up today. We're past that. I'm Polly. Polly. <laughs> now, look, Polly, listen. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So round. So firm. So firm. So fully packed. I'm four days. No, no. I got a good notion. 
to yank you out of that cage and teach you. Well, Roger, Roger, put it back. It's a bit easy on the door. <laughs> uh, it works every time. Well, kid, that takes care of the commercial. If he teaches that bird how to sing, I'm back in the Navy. Well, there's a warning to all of you. She's learning fast. Now, kid, let's rehearse the scene right after... Oh, we... Jack, why can't we rehearse tomorrow morning? It's getting late. We want to go to the movies. Well, all right. But, Dennis, before you go, run over your song. I'm going up to bed. So long, kids. I'll see you in the morning. So long, Jack. even sleepy. I think I'll sit up for a while and read a book. Let's see, here's one. Clara Klingenfield, girl bricklayer. <laughs> oh, I read that. Here's another one. I married a smudge pot. <laughs> see, that was a hot one. I remember that one. Here's another one. Your darn one last near made it.
I'm what you call an average citizen. I come from a little town in the Midwest. Yes, I'm married. I have a lovely wife. We have three fine boys and a dog. George, Frank, Harry, and Rover. <laughs> Harry is the dog. <laughs> My life, as the lives of most men, followed a course pointed out by the fickle finger of fate. Hmm, fickle finger of fate. See, this guy's a classy writer. Most stories start at the beginning. But my story begins at the end. I am occupying a cell in the death row at the state penitentiary. I'm innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. Let me out of here. The warden. Warden. few minutes they're going to execute me. What time do I go to the chair? 5.30. Good. And I won't have to listen to Fred Allen. <laughs> well, what am I saying? Warden, I tell you, it wasn't my fault. I don't want to go to the electric chair. Now, now, calm down. Our barber's a little rushed today, so I'll shave your head myself. But what? Uh, sit still. I'll start with the scissors. Take it easy around the sideburn, please. <laughs> uh, yes, Manicure? No, no, thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, on the house, you know. Oh, oh, manicure, please. Wait a minute, wait, let me out of here. I don't want to go to the electric chair. I won't in this room. I can't walk that last mile. Oh, you won't have to. We'll bring the electric chair in here. <laughs> what? We have a long cord, you know. <laughs> Warden, if you only listen to my story, I know you'll believe me. Oh, very well. What is your story? Well, Warden, it goes back a long, long time. I would have led a normal life, except for the fickle finger of fate. The Warden listened to my story. I told him how I met the man who was responsible for my undoing. I was walking down the street. I just left my office and was going home to my three wonderful children, Manny, Moe, and Jack. <laughs> we had Manny and Jack and felt that we should have one Moe. <laughs> anyway, I was walking along, and suddenly a figure stepped out of the shack. He was a small man with a round face. He reminded me somewhat of Peter Lorre. And when he spoke, his voice too reminded me of Peter Lorre. He tapped me on the shoulder and said, Pardon me, sir, but uh, may I trouble you for a match? A match? I'm sorry I don't have one, but I'll let you use my cigarette lighter. Thank you. You're very kind. Hey, you, come back with that lighter. Give me that. All right, all right. Here's your lighter. I thought you just wanted to light a cigarette. I do, but my cigarette is home. <laughs> oh, yeah? Then why were you running toward the railroad station? My home is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh? Yes. I married a smudge pot. Smudge pot? Now, wait a minute. You were trying to steal my cigarette lighter. No, I wasn't. As a matter of fact, I'd like to buy it. I'll give you $20,000 for it. $20,000? Well, I don't want to take advantage of it. I'll tell you what. I'll throw in an extra flint. <laughs> Here's the money. Twenty thousand dollars difference. Well, so long, Mister. I hope you enjoy the lighter. Oh, uh, uh, just a moment. I, I also admire that uh, necktie you are wearing. My necktie. <laughs> I know it sounds fantastic, 
but he bought my tie for $17,000. And then he bought my shirt, my shoes, and my suit. And I gave him my last stitch of clothing, this mysterious stranger. Handed me $194,000 and two balloons. <laughs> Having no clothes, I blew up the balloons and danced my way home. <laughs> the next day, I met the little man for a second time. Again, he gave me fabulous prices for my clothes, and again, I danced my way home. On the third day, the same thing happened. I was not only getting richer, but I was dancing better. <laughs> children, Anaheim, Azusa, and Cuca. <laughs> the little man had not yet come downstairs. Yes, he was living with us. Come on, children, finish your breakfast. That's right, children, eat every bit of it. But, Dowdy, I'm tired of this silly old caviar. <laughs> why can't we have oatmeal like we used to? Because we're rich, that's why. Now, hurry up or you'll be late for school. Where's Junior? Oh, he's out in the backyard making mud pies out of butter. <laughs> Heaven's sake, doesn't he know he's going to ruin his mink overalls? Anyway, he's been out there long enough. Junior, Junior, get ready for school. Oh, Daddy, I don't want to go to that new school. I bought it and you'll go to it. <laughs> now, get ready. You know, darling, things just haven't been the same since that stranger came to live with us. He frightens me. There's something weird about him. You know, I've been feeling the safe. Shh. Quiet. Here he comes now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, I did. Bad. How do you feel this morning? Oh, well, have some tomato juice. <laughs> yes, I'll get you some. Well, you know I envy you two. Oh, a beautiful home and lovely children. Haven't you any children? No. I married a smudge father. <laughs> oh, then you have no children? No. But we are lousy with oranges. <laughs> By the way, I, I don't feel I should live here any longer without paying you rent. How much do you want? Well, I'm no crazy thing. Let's forget it. Oh, no, 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 I insist. Would uh, a million dollars a week be enough? <laughs> well, with or without meal? <laughs> oh, uh, with meal. That'll be three dollars extra. I'll be glad to pay for it. Glad! Things like this were happening every day. I had gone money, had money, money, money. My, life, my wife left me. And so did my three lovely children. Atchison, Topeka, and Irving. <laughs> they ran off with the Harvey girl. And I didn't care I had my money. I had accumulated millions of dollars, which I kept in my shoes. I was now 11 feet six. <laughs> I begged the OPA to raise the ceiling. <laughs> One day, as I was sweeping some loose chains under the rug, $10,000 bill. Let me have it. 
Give it to me, quick. I gotta have it. All right, all right, but be careful how you handle it. The ink is still wet. Don't worry. I'll... The ink is still wet. Wait a minute. You mean you've been printing this money yourself? Certainly, doesn't everybody? <laughs> oh, so that's it. I must have been blind not to see through this whole scheme. My life is ruined. I lost my wife and my three lovely children, Sarah, Toga, and Trunk. <laughs> I thought I was rich. But I haven't got a tie or a shirt or a suit. All I got is money, 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 and all counterfeit. You've even got my cigarette lighter and I like a fool to win an extra flip. Yes, you are a fool. Do you think I'd really pay $17,000 for a necktie? $22,000 for your button shoes? Now, wait a minute. Yes, you are a fool. Do you think I'd give you $500 for a dinner when I could get the same thing at Ciro's for $400? <laughs> Of course, that money was counterfeit. And those balloons you gave me weren't any good either. They broke on the Sunset bus and embarrassed me. <laughs> and for all this time, you've been nothing but a counterfeit. Well, what's the difference? We can still do business. I can print the money, and you can get rid of it. For never, me. never, never. I'll kill you first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill you. Get your hands up. My Lord, take them away. Take Give you back your clothes. My clothes? What good are they now? You've had the pants short. <laughs> and the coat taken in. You even cut off the belt in the back. <laughs> now, show me. Why must I always die at the end? Shall we go? <laughs> yes. And so, as I walked through the little green door, I thought of my three lovely children. Fickle, finger, and face. <laughs> I stand condemned. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the tobacco auctions can see just who buys what tobacco. They can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means more real, deep down, smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F. E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, automated at 49, American. And Mr. L. A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. This is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. LSMFT. 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 Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday we'll be with you again broadcasting from the permanent Army Air Base at March Field. Well, Peter Laurie, I want to thank you very much for appearing on my program tonight. It's a pleasure to be here, Jack. I may not see you later, so I want to pay you for your performance right now. Here oh. you are, $3,000. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Be careful how you handle it. The ink is still wet. <laughs> Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.